Hello everybody, my name is Allison Tiemann. I am the writer and artist for Xenospora, and I'm also the person who had the original idea for Honey Badger Radio. Um, as you probably know by now, I've been banned not just from Calgary Expo, but from all of the events the organizers put on across Canada. Um, well, there's been a lot of conflicting stories on why I've been banned. Uh, the story that we got when we were at the booth and told to leave was that we had been um, harassing panelists um, when I was talking at Women Into Comics. In 2015, I was kicked out of a convention and banned for 10 years because I offended a bunch of mean girls. What did I do to offend them? Did it become a dirty thing for women to be into this stuff? Like, in the eyes of so many of these men's rights activist types or... Would you like us to field that question? Huh? Would you like us to field that question? Yeah, sure. Because I am a men's rights activist, so you can, okay. you can hate on me. The reason why I don't like feminism is because you promote this idea that women are defined by being victims. If you look at the context of all of your issues, men also face considerable problems as well. And they need to be brought into the story, and not just for men's sake, because this hides men's vulnerability, also for the sake of challenging the notion that women are defined as victims. So this was what I got kicked out for. I questioned what they were saying about geek and gamer culture victimizing women. They were saying that the culture excludes women, restricts their access, doesn't want them around. And in response to me saying, no, I think it's very inclusive and welcoming, those same mean girls got me kicked out and banned and then covered their asses about why I got kicked out and banned by lying about me in the Mary Sue. That's an online publication covering women's issues in geek and gaming. These lies were then picked up by big media outlets and spread across Western Canada, which in hindsight was a really, really good tactic because the, the media does not like to admit when it's wrong. I, I just wanted to t say a bit about myself and where I'm coming from, because there seems to be a lot of hatred being directed towards me by various feminists in media outlets. And I can understand, you know, because I'm, I'm a very difficult, I can be a very difficult person to relate to. The mean girls that I offended said that the institutions keep them down. In fact, that's what they always end up saying. And yet those self-same institutions seem to always keep everyone else down for them. We, we've had seen all kinds of tweets about us about the Honey Badger Brigade as a group, and one of them in particular was, uh, they, they look really mannish, they look like men, look very masculine from a feminist, and maybe I'd like to address that. When this happens, these individuals don't seem like advocates for women or anyone, really. They're advocates for themselves, advocates for their right to control and gain access to resources that they did not themselves create. We have, in the brigade, we have a very gender atypical expression of femininity. I wish it wasn't atypical, but we have a, all of us in the brigade have a tendency towards wanting to assume a position of strength and stewardship of other people's vulnerabilities, in this case, men's. And that's part of our identity as women, and that's very atypical, because you're really supposed to be the damsel, the victim, as a woman. You're really supposed to say, I'm oppressed by men. The allegation that a group, a community, a hobby, an industry, a civilization is at war with women, hates them, is ground zero for these narrative hijackers. That's how they board the ship deck, crack the vault open, and set themselves up as, as pirate queens in charge of everything. And then comes the censorship, the destroyed careers, the insane requests for, or not even requests, demands for accommodation, the canceling, the nepotism. And just as it dies down, it starts up again with the newest, most fashionable victim group, who the pirate queens, of course, speak for. It's a never ending grift that only ends when there's nothing left to steal. I attempted to get justice. I was a female comics creator that was blacklisted for questioning feminism. These are all my unsold boxes of Xenospora. All told, over $10,000 worth of investment into 
printing my comic book. And basically they will remain unsold since I have no physical place to actually sell my comic book. The Mary Sue and gets to take another another swipe at me. If the judge awards the Mary Sue full costs, I'm on the hook for 174k. In 2018, a Canadian civil court judge awarded the Mary Sue the court costs against me. Last year, the Mary Sue demanded payment. Four years later, I didn't see justice done, possibly because I was going up against not just a big donor to the city, but also the press. Like I said, the press does not like to be proven wrong. So if I had succeeded, that would have been an indication that they didn't do due diligence, that they lied. And the press doesn't like that. And since then, since I attempted to fight back, I've learned that the corruption in the Canadian courts is not just, it's not just epidemic. It's Kafka-esque. Well, it's both. And do you know why? You know, like four years later, why four years later? Best I can tell, a new company acquired them and they were just going through the books and finding out what was left on the accounts receivable. It was just simple accounting, nothing personal. And it's possible that the person who signed the letter didn't even know the story of how I ended up in the position of being obligated to this, to the Mary Sue. By that point, everything I had gone through was just a number in a spreadsheet. And it's a really strange feeling to fight so hard, and do so much work and put so much effort in and to feel so much despair over something. And it's now just a number in a spreadsheet. You give it your all to, f to fight and you lose and the villain Sue just shrugs and puts you down as an X in her wastage column. Next. Let me back up a bit. The reason I was at that convention was to sell my comic, Xenospora. It's about a far future, far future in the universe where successive waves of colonization sent out of the earth, all vastly different in terms of technologies, beliefs, reasons for leaving, have started to come back and find each other again. I was banned from a marketplace that I was doing well in. When other indie comics, I used to talk to them, when other, I would tell them about my sales, they were surprised at the numbers that I was selling quite a bit. I had a good pitch and I had a solid indie product and I was really enjoying getting people excited about my story. When the judgment first came down, I know it's very strange when you go through something like that. At least for me, the initial feeling, you don't really feel anything at all. It takes a while for it to start to percolate and, and come out. It takes a while to crack that salt dome. and But when it does, it definitely rushes out. Um, I think it might have taken a couple years. I was still in shock as a result of that judgment. But when it happened, there were things that I had to deal with. And I did a video and I told you all about what had happened, including the boxes upon boxes of comics that I had left to sell and nowhere to sell them because I was banned. I wasn't just banned from that comic book convention or from that convention. I was banned from a whole bunch of the conventions that were within driving distance of where I lived. But because you guys came together to buy a good chunk of my leftover books, I managed to get enough to cover the costs some of the costs of the original conviction that I experienced, as well as getting some extra sales. And eventually that went towards paying the Mary Sue. So thank you. Um, paying for them for publishing provable lies about me. However, there is some justice in the world. You are that justice. Thank you.
Last year, when I announced that the Mary Sue had finally come after me, a number of you told me privately that you wanted to help, and I declined. Between what I had from the sales and a loan, I covered it myself. Asking for money to walk away instead of fight or build is just not my style. Being banned from a convention, being lied about in the media, losing my lawsuit, being put in a detainment room at the U.S. border and threatened with arrest, then banned for the U.S. for five years, not being able to attend my own convention that I worked on for a year, and then having my business crushed by COVID restrictions and finally being depersoned by my government, not to mention the general depressingness of advocating for men's issues in a world that simply gives no fucks about men. Well, writing makes all of that disappear. Writing is how I purge myself of the despair and how I can meet the world with a smile again. So after all that, I wrote. I wrote all the pain I had experienced and all of the injustice. And I wrote about the justice. I wrote about you. Because you are that justice. This is my love letter, the book that I've written is my love lover. The book that I've written is my love letter to all the men and women who were, who were willing to look past the lies being told about me. The men and women who have the courage to question the narrative, and most importantly themselves. That's the hardest thing to do. And the thing, the thing, the thing, <laughs> the thing we most need to do I got kicked out because I questioned the allegation that the relationship between men and women is defined by oppression. That's what they use. That's what they always use to get their foot in the door. It isn't defined by oppression. It's defined by love. And anyone who says different is a tyrant who wants to control you. <sighs> It's hard to get all of these and myself in. Okay, so this is where I'm le left now. I have about 10 boxes left, plus an additional five or six that got damaged in a storm, a really bad storm that came through like last year. Uh, it was really bad. It even had like a tornado touchdown close by, which is almost unheard of in my neck of the woods. And it took some off some of the shingles and of course water got in and it got on some of the boxes. So there's, those are write-offs, but I have about 10 boxes left, um, mostly the second volume and the first issue. And uh, so that's where I'm sitting at. Thank you for everybody who helped me get much further along than that huge stack of boxes five years ago. And um, it, it's really, it, I really appreciate it. And it really helped out. And however, there is one drawback to it. When I was able to go to those conventions, I could turn people onto the story rather than the injustice of the story of the story. And that's a bit of a different thing. When you, when you do that, you gain, you start to build an audience for your stories. And I found that presenting stories with visuals is a lot easier than, than just simply writing. Writing is a bit more difficult to pull off, and I don't mean that comic books aren't a wonderful medium. It's just often easier to get people a sense of place and get people a s sympathetic characters because you can depict them. You can not just depict them what they look like, but you can also depict emotions and have them resonate visually, which is a really, it's really strong. It's a strong, it's a strong storytelling medium. And in many ways, that makes it a perfect medium to get people interested in your stories. And unfortunately, I lost that. But I really do appreciate the fact that you guys helped me out to get that number of boxes down. Um, oh my goodness. <laughs>